Hello sensuals. Welcome to my channel. This is Liana, Holistic Intimacy Coach with LianaBuzia.com. I welcome you here. A lot of people have joined in my uh, low time. So um, I actually want to give this video out to everybody to help you all navigate or know what to do when somebody's navigating through a low libido time. Now the structure of the video, usually I give you what the contents, what it's all about. Under the video you're gonna find timestamps, I definitely put those. And at the end of the video I either share a bit of my personal experience in case I've never worked with anybody or a bit from my coaching uh, clients experiences. And I also will announce whatever's gonna happen or whatever we're gonna go through in the next video. So you know, what's coming out. So that being said, how do we navigate our low libido times? Now, uh, first of all, the structure. So I'm going to look at don't push yourself to what you can actually do constructively with that lower energy. And three, when you see yourself a bit higher with your energy, what to do then? And number four, it's going to be a bit from my learning. So number one, don't push yourself. That is extremely important. Um, because you're in a lower, in a depression, let's say, in a smaller depression, so it's not uh, that bad that will get you into therapy, though always you can get some help, but your energy levels are gonna be lower. So first thing is first, don't push yourself. Don't overdo it. Don't start to work out like crazy. Don't start to uh, reach out to other people or accept invitations and go out when you don't have that much energy because it's not going to charge you in most cases it's, it's going to um, drain you of energy even more so a best thing to do here in your intimacy because that's what we're gonna look at and a little bit of the rest because the rest of the stuff that you do also impacts your intimacy but I'm nowhere near you know Nowhere near going to give you any advice on how to live your own life or what you should do in other situations. So with your intimacy, in case you're partnered, let your partner know that you're kind of low. They're going to sense it on you. They're going to see it on you. They're going to feel it on you. So, you know, they're, they're going to know anyway. But the fact that you say it sets the right atmosphere for you to be able to actually work on the situation meaning regenerate recuperate um you know rebirth yourself <laughs> i'll go with the phoenix myth here so they need to hear from you hey i'm not you know so overwhelmingly energetic but uh i'm still here i just need a bit more time for me to to get myself back on track and let them know if you're not going to be able to do the same, you know, things as you used to. Maybe clean up the house if that's important for your intimacy. Maybe groom yourself as much as you used to do. Maybe um, engage sexually or intimately or just spend as much time as you did in the past with them. Because you need, you're in an energy deficit in a way and you need to give yourself, first of all, energy. And if they're a bit human themselves, they'll understand, okay? Everybody has that. And everybody knows that sometimes you just need you. Even intimately, you know, you can't be there as you used to be if you're in a depression or a low libido. So if you have the, if you can muster up that energy, because it does take a bit of energy, to let your partner know what is going on with you, awesome. Otherwise, intuitively don't push yourself and and let others know okay i'm not so great now with energy i'm just not going to push myself please understand or whatever other phrase you have um people usually understand okay so i don't know if you let them know you'll be surprised at how much they'll get out of your way or they'll just understand uh the second thing that I would encourage you is the stuff that you can actually do. So first and foremost, definitely rest. That's important. You're not going to be able to do anything much in your intimate life or other areas of your life if you're tired. Usually when we're tired, we spend the remainder of our energy on the mandatory things for our survival 
Sex with your partner is not necessarily on that list, sadly. How do I know? Because when people are low, they don't go for sexuality coaching. They don't think that sexuality coaching can replenish them. They go for nourishment, maybe they go for workouts, maybe they go for a therapist, maybe they go for the uh, countryside or the mountainside, which is great, okay? So that's, you know, the general message or the underlying message here is when we're in an energy deficit, we don't necessarily use it for sex. Unless for whatever reason our entire being is so overly sexual that they or we feed ourselves through sex, then we know intuitively to go there because we're gonna not just spend energy but also get energy back. But for most people, sadly, I'm, I'm seeing this, it's not the case. So just be aware that when you're in an energy deficit, the important thing is first and foremost to give yourself honestly. There's no judgment, there's no shame here. Don't, don't let the programming of society now with overtly sexuality anytime, anywhere, and so on. Don't let that get to you. Whatever you need to recharge yourself, do that first and foremost. Maybe it's rest, again. Maybe it's nourishing food. Um, maybe it's warm baths. Uh, maybe it's going to the countryside, like I said earlier. Whatever it is, you need to give yourself that. If I might suggest something here, um, because a lot of people tend to medicate themselves when they're in a low, I would encourage you to first of all check in with your physician, your your nutritionist, your whoever is, if you have somebody that is advising you here, but supplement with vitamins, with uh, antioxidants, with um, joints um, supplements, uh, with collagen, um, just supplement with those. If you're ever going to get a supplementation of anything, in a low libido or in a depression state, that is the best time to do it, okay? Because we have this tendency to not nourish ourselves properly, we, we don't have the energy to cook or to buy the stuff that we actually need because we don't have the energy to do those things. So just ordering and making sure that it's the best for you supplements, maybe in a depression, that is the best time to actually go through that. I'm just saying. Another thing that I would definitely encourage you to do is to stick to a minimum of grooming. When it comes to intimacy, when we go through a low libido depression state, guess what happens with us? We kind of neglect our bodies. Meaning we don't work out, we don't groom ourselves, we don't uh, exercise or practice or maintain our sexuality. And we kind of not like ourselves because of that. So if there's anything, like a minimum of stuff that makes you feel juicy nonetheless, that reminds you that you're still a sexual being, as long as you're alive, you're also a sexual being. I don't know what you think of yourself now, but until the day you die, you're a sexual being from my perspective. So anything that reminds you of that, do it. Even if it is to a you know less than, lesser degree, do it anyhow. Uh, I'm not going to get into details here because everybody has a different um, requirement. Maybe you like your underwear to be fresh. <laughs> okay, strike that. I can't believe I said that. Okay, everybody likes their underwear to be fresh. <clears throat> Maybe you like to be... Um... Boy, this is not going to get easy. Okay, maybe you like to be shaved. Maybe you like to use certain cream or certain perfume. Um, maybe um, you like to splay yourself open in the sun. Okay, if you can do that. All right? That, that, actually, that would be great. For a lot of people, you know, from a health perspective. Just don't do it when the sun is extremely powerful and the radiation is the most potent. Okay? Don't do that. Um, maybe you like to eat aphrodisiacs. And I definitely need to make a video about aphrodisiacs. Until I do that, please check out any list online about aphrodisiacs. You're not going to see beer, uh, heavy alcohols, uh, pff, recreational drugs. You're not going to see them. Sorry, 
Um, you're not gonna see really heavy fried meats and all of that. No, you're gonna see a lot of uh, you're gonna see light meat, maybe you know like fish. Uh, you're gonna see uh, a lot of greens, a lot of vegetables. You're gonna see a lot of nuts and seeds. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of fruit. You're gonna see chocolate. You're gonna see wine. Uh, what else you're gonna see? Um, sometimes you're gonna see superfoods. Okay, algae, sprouts. Um, Jinko biloba and all of that, okay? If you go with traditional Chinese traditional medicine, um, well, you might see some, I don't know what kind of roots they have over there, but you're gonna see maca, by the way, which is Peruvian, but my point is this. A lot of the healthy food is actually aphrodisiacs. Um, why is that? Simply because a healthy organism and in shape and toned as in high energy and so on, is a better fit organism to reproduce. Simple. Nature knows, you know, survival or reproduction of the fittest. That's what it goes down to. So aphrodisiac foods, they're not going to be your cereal, uh, crackers, uh, whatever other pastry stuff, uh, heavily processed foods. You're not going to see that on aphrodisiac list. So go for aphrodisiacs. That's gonna help your entire system. You know, it's gonna help prevent you from losing minerals or losing important uh, enzymes, macronutrients, micronutrients. You're gonna stay in a healthy place. It's important to not let your psycho-emotional, physical draining, to not let it get you also into um, nutritional deficit somehow. So don't go there. Mimi. That's that's what I'm basically saying. So any kind of aphrodisiacs, uh, chocolate. Ideally, you want to make your own. So buy buy cocoa powder and um, buy peanut butter. Buy um, what is it? Curcumin. Buy um, whatever oils you like to use. Maybe you use olive oil. Though I don't use that. With I use coconut butter. Um, buy. Uh, what else? I usually put some moringa powder in my chocolate when I make it at home. I use honey a lot. I use a lot of bee products. Those get me up super, super well. I use raw pollen, um, royal jelly, obviously honey. So those also, those are aphrodisiacs because they contain a lot of nutrients. Okay, your body's gonna feel well. Okay, so do that. So that's the end of the list because I've gave me, I've given you enough. I'll try to put them under under the video in a list. The third thing that I'm going to suggest to you is whenever you feel yourself spiking with energy, so you're starting to feel what joy, the the urge or the craving to go outside and maybe see a friend or two, or go in a beautiful tea house. I love tea houses. Um, or just go in a beautiful raw vegan sweet shop or a uh, pastry shop or I know that I said that pastries aren't good but uh, still uh, if you see yourself wanting to meet others see life you know out there and also enjoy delicious food that's a sign that your libido is kind of peaking a bit when you're in a low libido state, you're not going to jump immediately to exuberance and orgasm and ecstasy and bliss and all of that. That's too high of a jump, emotionally speaking. Your body needs to get there gradually. So whenever you can sense that maybe you're in a high spirit mode, uh, or maybe you actually get a little turned on. I'm saying a little. In the case of men, it's going to be obvious. You get an erection. In the case of women... We do have erectile tissue, but it's a little more diffuse. So unless we're super, super connected to our pelvic floor, sometimes our a little bit of arousal, because that's what it looks like on its own, just a little bit of arousal, is gonna be, you know, uh, it's not everybody, it's gonna be under a lot of women's radars. However, if you can pick yourself going through that, spot yourself going through that, that's a sign that you're doing well. So in those moments, what I would say is do things that actually help you and keep score. Yes, 
You know how you keep score with all the negative stuff that happens? Well, when you're in a low vibe, low libido, depression mode, whatever you want to call it, keep score of the positive things that happen to you or that you notice or that you do. Because inertia is going to come back. So our, our state maybe will get gloomy again. But the good stuff that we did is still going to be there. And we we'll, if we keep keep score and maybe put it on a board somewhere, it's going to be there to remind us, okay, but this wasn't all bad. Maybe I did a workout in that moment. Maybe um, I did something for work or for a project that is super important to me. Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe I went for a treatment, a health treatment, okay? Maybe I just did, I just went to my nutritionist and I asked, okay, what can I do right now to kind of boost myself a bit? And he gave me a list of supplements and I took those. That's great. I did something for my health. Maybe I did something that made me feel juicy, okay? Maybe that fresh on, <laughs> or maybe the grooming or the perfuming or whatever. Maybe you buy yourself something in those moments that actually that you know you're going to use even afterwards, okay? I don't encourage you to buy like crazy things too out of place for you because when you get out of that low state, you're not going to use it and you might regret the money that you spent. So if you go for functional things, underwear that you know you're going to wear in normal conditions also, but it's just, you know, a different color, uh, but it's still comfortable, stuff like that. Don't buy high heel shoes, ladies. If you're not the type that wears high heels, don't spend your money with stuff that you know you don't normally use. Maybe just buy the same kind of shoes that you wear, but just take them in electric pink or electric blue or electric green, anything electric. You get the point. <laughs> okay, so whatever it is, do stuff that will be helping you even after that period is over. And... Again, keep the score. It's important to keep the score because when inertia comes back, you need to remind yourself of the stuff that you've done. When you're out of that completely, you are going to look back and say, okay, this was awful, nasty, okay, it's stroke. It's going to strike at some time. But I still did something good. If you're in the writing work, write a page, write, some, write a post. I don't know. Do something that you know is going to help you and others, ideally. And if you don't have the energy to do that, just mark down somewhere, I felt good today. That is the minimum of stuff that you can do. I felt good and I noticed this and I'm happy for this. It's important to realize that you're still going to feel good. You're alive. Okay? It's not all doom and gloom, basically. Okay. So, a bit about my own experience. Um, I obviously go through low libido times. Not many sexuality or intimacy coaches share this. You know, it's not so good for business or for reputation or whatever. But I've, um, the period, there's a, like a two week pause or something like that from my last video. I was in a low libido state. And it was, it, it was triggered, <clears throat> sorry about that. It was triggered by some technological challenges that I've had, and it was one after the other. And then that toppled my energy and I just, <clears throat> I couldn't get myself up. So I don't necessarily have, I've kind of developed my own method with workouts, with sexual practices. Uh, the sexual practices, I have them in my sex dojo for women. I live by those things. Even And by the way, I don't do them daily. That's another thing. I recommend to all my women that at least once a week they do a sexuality practice unless they're in the week where they're menstruating and they don't feel like doing that. That's also, you know, they're exempt from, <laughs> from the practice. But otherwise, I do keep that minimum of once a week. And it's not always that elaborate. Sometimes it's just five minutes. And I'm like, okay, I did whatever it was, maybe the intro for my sexuality practices, but I did it. Um, and I obviously take care of, you know, the grooming also, I feel it. It's kind of, I don't feel like taking care so much of myself. My hair is, it's kind of a rebel anyway, but it looks really bad uh, where I live because some 
people follow me on my social media from the same city. When they see me, I kind of, and I'm in a low libido state because I have those moments, I'm also human. I kind of sense them, you know, going like, okay, is she really the sexuality coach that she's supposed to be? Because that she doesn't look so sexy. I thank God I have more self-esteem than that and I just, you know, I can sense those things but I don't let them get to me because I'm also a human being. So, you know, it's all good. Um, so when I, and I also keep score, okay, whatever, I don't write it down, I, I rarely do I write things down, I, I'm not so much into writing lists and all that, but I, at the end of the day, I do my meditation or my inner contemplation, and I remind myself, what did I do good today, even if it was one thing, and if it was nothing, because some days there's nothing good that I did in my low libido states, yeah, sometimes that happens, I keep or remind myself that, okay, but that's okay. Still, I've done good things in the past. Just because I couldn't do anything good today, that doesn't mean that I'm... It doesn't mean anything. I'll take it as it is and then move on. So, um, yeah, that that's how I go about it. And um, thank God I have my wolf. I mean, that's the only masculine presence that I have. It's a wolf. But um, there's nobody else to, you know, kind of cheer me up uh, with all the stuff that is going on. My friends are a bit, you know, at a distance. So, but I still, you know, I navigate through it. I know that it's going to be over at a certain point And then I come out of it. And I do try to enjoy myself also. So to stay focused on what I have to do for work. Even though it's I'm not so productive, that's also going to happen. But I also try to do stuff that will bring me joy. The stupidest things, maybe I'll watch a show, maybe I'll watch random videos on YouTube. I do that a lot. But if I know that they gave me at least a little bit of juiciness inside, because that's what I'm looking for. For me, it's important to keep my juiciness there. My succulents, basically. Uh, then... I'm like, okay, but it, it it was stupid, it was whatever, it was a crappy show, it doesn't matter. Do I feel juicy or succulent? Yes, check. Good. So, yeah, that's that's how I go about it. And whenever I work with somebody, not when they're in their low libido, because again, people in their low libido, for whatever reason, they don't want to come to a sexuality coach. They feel that maybe they should go to a sexuality coach only when when they're in their high and I say that's half of, you know, half-assing it, basically, because a sexuality coach can help you also when you're down. But that takes a bit of rewiring to realize that. So, um, that being said, I'm going to close this here. I want to encourage you to remember that if you're going through low libido, it's going to be over. Your energy is going to come back up, definitely. And it's important to do at least a little bit of good stuff or just not push yourself, okay? If, if one thing that is great in this time, don't push yourself. It's still a good thing. It's still a white, you know, marble on your score. Uh, and next week, we're going to talk about sexuality practices. This was something that I was going to do. So I'm going to present a bit of the sexuality practices that I do in my work what they're good for, and why they're a resource, essentially. So, until next week, enjoy and check out my channel. Welcome once again. Check out other things. Until then, you have a lot of stuff to watch here. Hopefully, they will answer some of your questions. Bye.